All right, so, uh, so let us uh, let me just write down what I said uh, last time. Uh, so, we are we are trying to prove Marty's theorem, which is uh, you know, it is a it is an analog of uh, Montel's theorem for uh, uh, you know, meromorphic functions, okay. And we uh, we have just uh, so what I have written here. Uh, is up to one way of the proof of uh, the theorem, okay? Namely, that uh, if you have uh, normal u normal uniform boundedness of the spherical derivatives, then uh, of a family of uh, meromorphic functions defined on a domain in the complex plane, uh, then uh, the that family is uh, compact in the sense that uh, it's normally sequentially compact. Namely, that given any sequence in that family, you can find a subsequence which converges uniformly on compact subsets of your domain okay so uh, and and i i just told in words the proof that uh, the the other way of the theorem uh, is also true uh, uh, that namely suppose you start with a family which is normal so uh, in the sense that uh, a family which has this property that uh, every sequence admits a normally convergent normally uniformly convergent subsequence okay uh, then uh, of course this is a family of meromorphic functions then uh, then the claim is that the if you look at the family of spherical derivatives uh, that family has to be normally uniformly bounded namely it should be uniformly bounded on every compact subset okay and that is the way I uh, that is the way we have to write down the proof I, I, I told you in words how this can be done but now I will write it down uh, uh, I will uh, I'll write it down uh, more accurately. So, uh, so let me write this here conversely uh, so probably I will because I am going to the converse I will probably change color take something else. Uh, so, conversely assume that uh, script f uh, is uh, a family of meromorphic functions on d uh, uh, such that uh, such that uh, uh, every uh, sequence in uh, script f admits uh, uh, normally uh, a normally uniformly convergent subsequence so i'm i'm abbreviating uniformly to uflyc cgt is the abbreviation of convergent and subseq is for subsequence so uh, so basically your uh, this is the right notion of saying that the family is compact okay uh, what do i have to show uh, we, 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 we need to show uh, to show uh, that uh, the the family of spherical derivatives, namely, this is the set of all. Uh, you take uh, you take each function small f in the family script f, and take its spherical derivative. Okay, and then you get the family of spherical derivatives uh, of this collection. Uh, and uh, uh, what you have to show is that this family of spherical derivatives is uh, normally uniformly bounded okay uh, is normally uh, that means that uh, you know uh, you will have to show that it is comp uh, that that it is uniformly bounded on every compact subset of t okay what does uh, what does that condition mean uh, that is uh, for every compact subset uh, k in d so i am using cpt to abbreviate the word compact so for every compact subset k in d okay uh, 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 so so let me write it as a logical statement because i am going to negate it because we are going to prove it by contradiction uh, for every k in d uh, with k compact with k compact there exists m greater than 0 there is a uniform bound for all the spherical derivatives uh, of the functions in your family uh, when restricted to k that is so if i write it down it, it means that there exists a uniform bound 
which I am calling as M uh, such that uh, the spherical derivative of uh, at each point uh, is uh, is bounded by bounded above by M for all functions f a small f in the family script f and for every point z in the compact set okay this is the this is exactly the condition that the family of spherical derivatives is normally uniformly bounded mind you the spherical derivative is a is a positive is a non negative real number okay the spherical derivative is a non, non negative real number it's two times the modulus of the usual derivative divided by uh, 1 plus modulus of the function squared okay and and this is at all the points where the function is analytic and uh, since we are considering meromorphic functions uh, you you could have points which are poles and at poles i have told you what the spherical derivative is we have evaluated it by continuity uh, if the pole is a simple pole the spherical derivative is 2 divided by the modulus of the residue of the function at that simple pole otherwise it is zero if it is a pole of uh, higher order okay and of course uh, for this exceptional function which is constantly infinity on the whole domain which is also uh, possible uh, in a limit uh, of of uh, meromorphic functions or even for that matter even for analytic functions in a under normal limit for this function which is constantly inf in infinity equal to infinity the spherical derivative is zero okay we should remember that so uh, so here is uh, so what we have to show is that we have to show this condition okay and what we will do uh, is we will prove by contradiction so what we will do is we will assume this condition is is not going to hold and we will contradict the fact that you have normality of the family namely that every sequence in the family uh, admits a, a, a subsequence which converges uniformly on compact sets so so we will do that we will we'll show a contra counter example to that okay so uh, uh, so suppose uh, uh, the above the above does not hold so this is proof by contradiction suppose this does not hold then uh, what do you do uh, so you know what you will have to do is I will have to negate this okay I have to negate this logical statement okay and you know uh, there is a very uh, slick way of uh, you know uh, negating logical statements uh, you normally replace for every with there exists and the other way around you you replace there exists with for every okay that is the way you do it. So you know if I negate this what I will get uh, for every compact subset I want a certain property to hold if I, if I negate it, it means that there I can find a certain compact subset where this property will not hold. So this for every k in d with k compact will negate to there exists k in d with k compact so it will become there exists k subset of d with k compact okay and what is the rest of it so look at the original statement for every k in d with k compact there is uh, there is this this is the rest of the statement it is it, it, the statement is that for every uh, for every uh, f and for every z okay I can I can find a, an m such that the spherical derivatives of f at z are all bounded by m okay so this this there exists m greater than 0 on upon negation will become for every m greater than 0 okay and uh, this for every small f will become a there exists small f and this for every small z will become there exists a small z so the way this part negates is you will get for every capital m greater than 0 there exists an f sub m in the family okay and a point z sub, uh, sub m in the compact set such that the spherical derivative uh, of f sub m at z sub m is going to be greater than m this is how it negates okay this is the negation of that statement so in particular what i can do is that you know basically i i want to show that if i assume if th that this happens i want to show that i am going to get a contradiction and contradiction to what contradiction to what i have assumed <coughs> namely that the family uh, whenever you have a sequence you can extract a normally convergent subsequence okay so uh, so i'll have to cook up a sequence and the way i do it is since this uh, this negative statement is true for k you start putting uh, m equal to 1 2 3 4 so you you make m larger and larger so that m goes to infinity and then you know by going to infinity you expect that uh, the spherical what you will get is you will get a sequence of points 
and a sequence of functions which where the spherical derivatives at those corresponding points is going to infinity but then this cannot be uh, uh, this cannot come from uh, uh, the original family if it were normal that is because normal convergence uh, of, uh, uh, of a family also implies normal convergence of the spherical derivatives and mind you the spherical derivative is a finite quantity okay it cannot go it cannot it's not an it's not an infinite quantity okay so that's how we'll get the contradiction so what i'll do is so let me write it down these are gory details but sometimes you should know how to write down things uh, that's very important and sometimes you should also be able to just say it in words uh, for example you would find uh, uh, in several textbooks uh, uh, they probably the textbook be, textbook would become very voluminous if they write down every detail so they might just qualitatively say it in, in a few words okay but then it is your duty to write it down uh, you have to translate it okay so this is part of uh, uh, this is part of this exercise when, whenever you read a book okay uh, but since this is a lecture uh, I am bound to explain as many details as I can uh, so I will do it so put m equal to 1 2 and so on get uh, f1 f2 and so on this is a these are all functions in the family script f and you get these points z1 z2 and so on uh, which these are all points in k with uh, the spherical derivative of fi uh, at zi greater than i okay i get this this is uh, when i when i put m equal to 1 2 and so on okay now uh, now you know how the uh, how the proof will go on the one hand i have this sequence of functions so i can always extract a normally convergent subsequence because that is part of my assumption okay on the other hand I also have the sequence of points okay it is a sequence of points but where does it lie it lies in a compact set therefore it, it there is a convergent subsequence because you know any compact this compact set is a compact metric space and for a compact metric space uh, you know that means compactness means uh, is equal to sequential compactness which means that from every sequence you can extract a convergent subsequence so uh, what I can do is that I can do it either way so but so let me do it like this uh, since uh, k uh, is uh, compact uh, so sequentially compact uh, because compactness and sequential sequential compactness are uh, equivalent for metric spaces uh, uh, there exists uh, subsequence uh, z uh, let me call this as z n uh, uh, Zn i, okay. Uh, there is the subsequence uh, which which converges, okay. To it will converge to a point, and that point has to be in K because you know a compact set is closed, okay. Uh, because it's a set is closed, so it'll uh, if a set is closed, it will contain limits, okay. So uh, Zn uh, Z sub n i is a subsequence, and uh, it's a it's a convergent subsequence, so the limit should also be in K because K is closed. Okay. Fine. So, so you have this. Uh, uh, so you have these ZNIs going to Z naught on the one hand. Okay. This is the compactness of K where I'm uh, that's being used. And then I'll also use the no, uh, the the fact that the family uh, is normal. Okay. That it is compact. Okay. So um, I uh, 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 well uh, uh, by hypothesis. Uh, 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 there exists a subsequence. Uh, uh, so you know, um, well, there exists a subsequence of uh, f sub n i. Okay, so you see, I'm uh, uh, I already have the original sequence. Okay, and I have the original sequence of points. When I take a subsequence of points which converges, I have gotten a subsequence of the of the uh, uh, original sequence, and I'm cons considering the corresponding functions in the family of the in the sequence of functions and I am uh, that is already a subsequence and I am extracting a further subsequence from that because that is what uh, the normal sequential compactness is all about from given give me any sequence I can always extract a normally convergent subsequence. So uh, I am not trying to I am not extracting a convergent uh, no, a normally convergent subsequence from f1 f2 and so on but I am extracting a normally convergent subsequence from the subsequence given by fn1 fn2 and so on. Okay, so uh, so there is a sub subsequence of f n i. Uh, say, uh, let me call this as well. The notation gets a little bit bad, uh, but doesn't matter. So I get this subsequence. Uh, I, I get a subsequence of this, which uh, converges uniformly on uh, k. Okay, 
in fact it will be a subsequence which will converge uniformly on all compact subsets of D okay that is what the theorem uh, that is what the hypothesis promises but I am restricting I am just worried about K for the moment because uh, K is a compact set when I am working. Now but here is the issue the issue is that these uh, uh, this F n i L okay uh, this will go to certain F naught okay because you see a normal limit of uh, if you take a normal limit of meromorphic functions that is also meromorphic that is something that we prove okay see a normal limit of meromorphic functions is either identically infinity okay or it is a meromorphic function it can even be holomorphic it can even be holomorphic okay this is what we have already seen okay. So this F naught what can happen with F naught is that F naught can either be the function which is identically infinity or F naught can be a honest meromorphic function uh, it could even be a holomorphic function okay. So note that uh, either F naught is identically infinity okay or uh, well uh, 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 F naught is uh, meromorphic function on T okay. So this is there all right and what is it that I uh, that I want you to understand see this convergence is uniform on K this F i n F n i l converges to F naught is uniform on uh, K it is a uniform convergence. So, so what it means is given uh, epsilon greater than 0 okay that you can find uh, an n such that if if your if your i sub l is greater than n all right uh, uh, then uh, the 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 uh, the distance between these two functions uh, the distance between the function values at any point of k is it can be made less than epsilon and mind you now because you are working with meromorphic functions you could very well they could very well take the value infinity and you should not use the usual distance you should, you should use the spherical distance. So uh, uh, you will you will have so I have to write it like this the spherical of f uh, uh, of n i l uh, f sub n i l of z uh, comma uh, f naught of z this can be made less than epsilon okay the spherical distance between the value of these two this the, the functions in the sequence beyond a certain stage and the value at the limit uh, that can be made as small as I want this is uniform convergence so, and the point is that this n has got nothing to do with z so this is for all z in k this is the uniformity it works for all z okay. So, uh, so in particular uh, you know uh, you can now see what I am getting at you see I have these z n i's these z n i's are going to z naught okay and therefore the f if you give me any function f in the family uh, by continuity f of z n i will go to f of z naught all right and but the point is for f if I had taken f n i okay uh, what will happen if you take the original sequence uh, of functions f1 f2 and so if you take f i and evaluate it at z i not the function but I mean the spherical derivative okay then it is greater than i okay we have this. So if I take this f n i and evaluate and take its spherical derivative and then evaluate at z n i I am going to get uh, something that is greater than n i okay and that is supposed to go to uh, f n i of z naught and now if I let n i tend to infinity it will go to f naught of z naught. So essentially you know f naught of z naught is going uh, is, is coming very close to a sequence of quantities which are becoming larger and larger then how can it be because uh, the uh, I mean not f naught of z naught but I mean uh, spherical derivative of f naught of z naught. So, so let me write it out yeah so the first statement I need to make is uh, so this was the uh, the lemma that I had uh, uh, I had rubbed out uh, uh, last time. So this lemma is that if uh, g n converges to g normally in uh, suppose this is a normal convergence uh, uh, then the spherical derivatives uh, also respect that. So then the spherical derivatives of the gns will go to the spherical derivatives of g normally. So, so this is the lemma that I rubbed out uh, which we need to use at this point 
if you have a sequence of meromorphic function which converges to a limit function and suppose uh, the uh, all this is happening normally namely it is happening uniformly on compact subsets of your domain D then of course we have already seen that the limit function is going to be meromorphic or it, can, it is identically infinity okay. So this G can be either meromorphic uh, or it is identically infinity and the point is no matter what that is the if you take the corresponding sequence of uh, spherical derivatives that will converge also to the spherical derivative of the limit and that will happen normally okay. And remember that if G is the function which is ident in identically infinity there is no problem with the spherical derivative it is 0 it is not some it is not something uh, that is uh, strange okay uh, it is not an undefined quantity or something like that okay. So you have this so I am using this so, so if I use this what will I get uh, what I will get is that you see uh, uh, I have this F n i l going to F naught so this will tell me that uh, F uh, n i l the the spherical derivatives will go to F naught uh, spherical derivative of F naught okay and uh, uh, and this is happening uh, mind you this is going to happen normally so it is going to be this all this is going to happen uniformly on k okay. So this is uniformly on k because k is compact alright and what does this mean this means that you know the uh, uh, if you if you calculate uh, mind you when I am comparing uh, uh, when I am comparing values of uh, usual meromorphic functions I will have to use this the spherical uh, uh, metric okay but when I am uh, comparing values of the spherical derivative okay I have to use the usual distance function on R because spherical derivatives are uh, non-negative real numbers. So uh, what this means is that uh, uh, given uh, an epsilon prime greater than 0 there exists an n prime uh, such that if the if the the index is greater than n prime then uh, the distance between f n i l hash uh, and f not hash uh, or, or for at any z is can be made less than epsilon prime okay I can do this uh, for all z in k this is what it means and I am using the modulus function here because these values are all real values okay you see uh, I will now interpolate so what I will do is that I will use a triangle inequality and write this is f n i j of z i j uh, and then uh, I will add uh, f not of z i j okay I can do this plus uh, I then I will write this f naught of z i j uh, minus uh, f naught uh, and of course everything is a spherical derivative is not just the original functions so and then I will have f hash of uh, z naught. So this is just by the good old triangle inequality on the real line right I have just added and subtract the spherical derivative at z i j okay and uh, of, 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 of f naught. So uh, now you know uh, now you know what I am going to do so this will be nij that is what this quantity is alright and uh, uh, now you know by now you know what is what is happening you see this quantity is nij and as ij tends to infinity this quantity this is going to go to infinity okay this is going to go to infinity as uh, ij tends to infinity okay you know that alright. So, uh, what you are saying is what is there on the left is the distance from f naught hash of z naught okay to a point to a, to a value which is going bigger and bigger and you are saying that can be bounded by the sum of two quantities okay see the first quantity see the, the, the first quantity can be made less than epsilon uh, that is because of the uniform convergence of f n i j to f naught. See, we, we have, I have just written it down above. The the f n i j's they converge uniformly to f naught on k. So the the lemma says that therefore the spherical derivatives also converge. So the distance between f n i j hash and f naught hash at any point can be made as small as I want. So the moral of the story is that this quantity here can be made less than epsilon. Okay, and and uh, the, this is okay. Uh, I have, this is okay for any z. Okay. Uh, so I, I plug in zij so I can make this less than epsilon okay and look at this quantity here w what is it so this is less than epsilon of course I will have to put put in put in some condition uh, and the condition is that uh, if this nij is chosen greater than n uh, I think it was 
so it is less than epsilon prime if uh, uh, if you choose the ij greater than n prime so let me write that so it is this can be made less than epsilon prime if so let me write it correctly uh, ij can be ma made greater than n prime okay i can do this right and um, and again i think uh, i missed uh, uh, the subscript needs to be corrected here so let me do it oops yeah this is a uh, this is an issue with double subscripts or triple subscripts okay uh, so this quantity uh, uh, this can be made less than epsilon okay so i have this and then what about the second quantity the second quantity is the spherical derivative at uh, at at so that there, there's a zero missing here uh, the spherical derivative of f not at z i j minus the spherical derivative of uh, uh, f not at z not okay but mind you this also i can make uh, sufficiently small that's because of the continuity of the spherical derivative the spherical derivative is anyway continuous okay uh, so the uh, the so the moral of the story is that i can make this also this also can be made less than uh, if you want epsilon double prime uh, if you choose some uh, 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 yeah again i have this uh, this problem cropping up that i'll have to worry about this double subscript let me write, write this nij uh, if n sub ij if 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 ij is sufficiently large uh, uh, is greater than say n double prime i can do this and this is just uh, uh, what am i using here uh, 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 I am just using, uh, I do not have space to write, but maybe I will come to continue here, uh, uh, continuity, use, use continuity of f naught hash at z naught and, and remember that the z n i j's also tend to z naught, the z naught uh, was a limit point, okay. So uh, that is it, uh, you have a quantity on the left. Okay, which is very close to uh, a very large number okay, and this large number is becoming larger. That it is very close to a large number is because it is bounded by a quantity on the right which is very small. Okay. The sum of epsilon and epsilon prime I can make it as small as I want. So it means that the quantity on the left which is the spherical derivative at z naught of f naught that can that comes arbitrarily close to any large number okay. and that is impossible because that is a this is a contradiction because this quantity is a finite quantity the, the spherical derivative at any point is a finite quantity so it it cannot go it cannot go it cannot be within an epsilon distance of an increasing sequence of numbers it just cannot happen so that is a contradiction so so let me put this here so this is a uh, finite quantity and and the totality of all is that uh, well uh, that the whole the whole thing that you have written down managed to get is absurd okay uh, so let me write that down so this is absurd okay all this is absurd can't happen so so we get a contradiction okay and that that finishes the proof okay so uh, spherical derivatives need to be bounded and um, the point I want you to remember is that, of course, you know, sometimes writing down these gory details is uh, is is uh, is a pain. Uh, you'll have to worry about uh, subscripts and things like that. But then once in a while you should do this because then you get a uh, you get a feel of having written down something very accurately. Okay, and of course you also should try to uh, be very elegant and say without any notations. Uh, you must be able to just say in words. So if you want to say all this, this crazy thing in words, you know what you would say is that well I have I have a sequence of uh, points, uh, and I have a sequence of functions, uh, which uh, if I, that is if I want to prove by contradiction, I will find a compact set on which the uniform boundedness of the derivatives will be uh, will not be true. On that compact subset, I can get a sequence of functions, and a sequence of points such that the corresponding uh, spherical derivatives are going to be unbounded okay and uh, but then the points have to converge because it is a compact subset uh, at least the subsequence of points have to be have to converge because it is a compact subset okay 
So and, and also the functions must allow a convergent subsequence. If you put these two together, what will happen is that you will, you will get a sequence of uh, spherical derivatives becoming unbounded, okay, but coming arbitrarily close to the spherical derivative of uh, the limit function at that given point and that is not possible because the spherical derivative of a function at a given point is a finite quantity. Okay. So that is how you can say it elegantly in words. Okay. Fine. So that finishes Marty's theorem. So mind you Marty's theorem is, uh, is, is very very powerful because you see it is more powerful than uh, it is more powerful than the usual Montel theorem because you see Montel's theorem uh, the original Montel's theorem says that you know you it is it, it is only for analytic functions and uh, what you had required there was uh, well uh, you needed uh, uh, normal uniform boundedness of the family of analytic functions all right. Uh, Whereas in Marty's theorem, uh, you generalize from analytic functions to meromorphic functions, okay, and you don't require bounded uh, normal uh, uniform boundedness of the functions, but you require normal uniform boundedness of the spherical derivatives of the functions. Okay, so this is the difference. So if you so suppose I have a family of analytic functions, okay, and suppose I know that they are uh, 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 derivatives are uniformly bounded, normally uniformly bounded, okay. I can still conclude something uh, from uh, I cannot apply the original Montel theorem okay but I can apply Marty's theorem and say that I can still conclude that this family of analytic functions will converge to a limit and since it is normal convergence okay uh, 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 I mean I mean you, if you take a sequence of uh, functions from this family I can extract a subsequence that will converge to a limit and that limit will either be holomorphic or it will be identically infinity. So you see Marty's theorem is more powerful that is what I want to tell you okay. So uh, 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 le le let me again let me again go back to that uh, that slide that I wrote out uh, 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 here it is. So here is so this is uh, let me go back to this slide you see uh, there was this thing that I have circled in uh, uh, in violet. Uh, in uh, surrounded by a small uh, written it in red the family of derivatives is normally uniformly bounded is an intermediate step okay so if i start with the family uh, 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 which is normally uniformly bounded and suppose it's a family of analytic functions because of the cauchy integral formula okay i get that the family of derivatives is normally uniformly bounded okay and from there i get equicontinuity and once i have equicontinuity and uniform boundedness i can apply the arzel haskell theorem Okay, and then whatever I want I get by doing a diagonalization argument. But now you see suppose I am given uh, a family of analytic functions okay, on a domain, suppose I am not given that the family is uh, normally uniformly bounded, suppose I am not given that, okay. I cannot apply the original Martin theorem. Suppose I am given uh, uh, instead of being given that the original family of analytic functions is bounded, suppose I am given that the family of derivatives usual derivatives which which makes sense for analytic functions suppose i am given that that family is uniformly normally uniformly bounded okay i cannot apply montel's theorem because i don't have the uniform boundedness normal uniform boundedness of that family itself i have only the normal uniform boundedness of the derivatives of the family i cannot apply the usual montel theorem but then the uniform boundedness of the ordinary the boundedness of the ordinary derivative will give rise will imply the boundedness of the spherical derivative because because of this inequality you see uh, if you go down uh, because that is the uh, so this is what I have circled in, in violet the you see the, uh, the, the, the spherical derivative is bounded by 2 times uh, uh, the uh, bound for the normal derivative the usual derivative. So if I am given a family of analytic functions such that the usual derivatives are normally uniformly bounded it follows that the family of spherical derivatives is normally uniformly bounded okay so i can apply marty's theorem marty's theorem will tell me now therefore that any sequence in that family admits a convergent subsequence a normally convergent subsequence okay and uh, that normally convergent subsequence is what it's a, it's a convergent sequence of holomorphic functions but the only thing is that the convergence is with respect to the spherical metric and then you know what happens you, uh, my uh, my my uh, the, my limit function uh, can will either be holomorphic that is analytic 
or it will be identically infinity ok. So, what is the upshot of all this? The upshot of all this is let me state it. If you have a family of analytic functions on a domain and suppose you know that the usual derivatives of the analytic functions are normally uniformly bounded ok, then that family uh, is compact in the sense that give me any sequence in that family I can find a subsequence of uh, convergence normally convergent subsequence and the limit function will either be again analytic or it will be identically infinity. This is what I, can, I will get because of Marty's theorem and mind you I cannot apply the original model theorem because for the original model theorem I need boundedness uniform boundedness on compact subsets of the original family that is not given to me what is given to me is only uniform boundedness on compact subsets of the derivatives ok. So, that so in that sense uh, Marty's theorem is very very strong it is stronger than uh, Montel's theorem ok. So, uh, so with that you know uh, uh, I have more or less uh, we have more or less come to uh, one point uh, here uh, in our discussion I will tell you what we need to do next ok. So, if you see in all these things that we have proved we have been looking at a domain in the complex plane ok. So, uh, uh, what are the things that we proved first we proved that uh, uh, so on a, for a domain in the complex plane we defined uh, normal convergence ok that is uniform convergence on compact subsets and then we proved that if you take a normal limit of analytic functions ok uh, then the limit is either identically infinity ok if you use a spherical metric or it will be uh, again an analytic function. And if you take a same thing happens for meromorphic functions. If you take a family of meromorphic functions, okay, uh, if you uh, if it's if it's uh, uh, if if the family, uh, for example, if you take a sequence of meromorphic functions which is uh, normally uh, uniformly convergent, then the limit function is again going to be either meromorphic, it or it will be identically infinity. You don't get any strange situations. Okay, the the moral of the story is. Uh, when you take a normal limit of analytic functions you will get an analytic function and the extreme cases you will get the function which is identically infinity. Same for meromorphic functions ok and we have seen that for example if you take a, se a sequence of meromorphic functions it is not going to go to uh, 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 a sequence of analytic functions is not going to go to a strictly meromorphic function ok. A pole cannot pop up at you at, at the limit ok such things cannot happen. So, it is all very well behaved and then we have proved the Montel's theorem and we have proved Marty's theorem ok. Now, all this is for usual domains. What about a domain which contains the point at infinity? That is the next we want to we want to include all extend all these re results to a domain in the extended plane. What is the problem with the domain in the extended plane? The problem with the domain in the extended plane is the point at infinity at at a point for the point at infinity ok you cannot find a compact neighborhood at least on the usual plane ok. So, if you take suppose D, uh, so so what I am trying to say is that you know uh, if you if you say that uh, uh, if I have a if I am taking a domain in the extended plane that means it is actually a domain in the usual plane it is uh, in the exterior of a, a large enough disk and it includes the point at infinity ok. And whenever I take compact subset of that it will it will not include the point at infinity the point at infinity cannot come into any compact subset ok. So, there is a problem if you take a domain which contains a point at infinity ok you are never able to get a compact neighborhood of infinity in the usual sense ok. So, what is the meaning of normal convergence at infinity that has to be made sense of you have to understand what normal convergence at infinity means you will have to uh, understand uh, uh, that in that context you have to you have to extend all these theorems ok. So, what I will do in the coming lecture is coming lectures is you know try to look at normal convergence at infinity and extend all these results to the case when your domain is a domain in the extended plane which can possibly contain the even the point at infinity ok. So, this is a very very important step ok and then we have enough tools to go ahead with the uh, with another theorem called Zalkman's lemma and that will lead directly to a uh, stronger version of uh, Montel's theorem on omission of values and that will lead to finally to the Picard theorems ok. So, we will see that in the forthcoming lecture.